Microsoft System has had some stellar titles over the years, and these are not some of them. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst Xbox One games. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at what we consider to be the worst games available on Xbox One. To be eligible, these games need to be exclusive to the Xbox on the console market, but we are allowing games that are available on Steam. Basically, as long as the games can't be found on the PS4, Wii U, or the Switch, they're good to go. Uh, player one to win the hole. Number 10, Rise, Son of Rome. A revered leader in a vast army. While this game may be a technical marvel and a great showpiece for proving what the Xbox One was capable of at launch, the gameplay left a lot to be desired and left many excited gamers kinda disappointed. The campaign is both brutally short and lacks all replayability, and the gameplay is extremely monotonous and simplistic, often resorting to repeated quick-time events until your generic foes are dead. While it's hard to pass on a sword and sandals epic, it's also hard to rise to this one's defense. Number 9, Power Star Golf. Clap. Power Star Golf is not terrible, and for its teeny weeny price point, you can't complain too much. That said, it's a barely average golf game, and it was released at a time when people were expecting something more, which significantly hindered the game's reception. The game plays like a typical cartoonish golf title with a few new but forgettable additions like a caddy system and RPG elements, meaning that you could style your golfer to your liking. Fun stuff. It's passable for a night of mindless entertainment, but it's really nothing more than that. Allow me to demonstrate. Number 8, Magnets, fully charged. <laughs> Originally released on Steam, this title harkens back to the golden days of old, when children's games were filled with colorful locations, goofy gameplay, and annoyingly repetitive but still kinda catchy and oh, now we're humming it at work kinda music. However, a nostalgic trip is all that this game seems to be, as it lacks any sense of innovation, variety, or, you know, fun. The gameplay is extremely monotonous, and the price point is certainly something to raise an eyebrow at. It's good for a few fleeting moments, but otherwise, totally forgettable. Number 7, Zombie Driver Ultimate Edition. This top-down driving game, which sees you killing zombies and saving survivors, among other boring stuff, was originally released during the previous generation. But fear not, you die-hard zombie driver fans. There has been a 60 FPS, all DLC included version of the game released exclusively for the Xbox One. Unfortunately, it's the same brain-dead experience as the last, only with a fresh coat of paint. Perhaps the worst offender of this release is the outrageous listing price of 15 bucks Canadian for a title no better than a mobile game, as it lacks any sort of depth or replayability. Number 6, Zoo Tycoon. Okay, so we feel kind of bad ragging on a harmless zoo simulation game, but the point stands. This game stinks like elephant shit. The title sees you and up to three others building a zoo and littering it with over a hundred gorgeous animals. It even features a kinda neat connect feature that allows the animals to recognize your voice. However, the severely limited customization options and the absolutely stupid zoo limit severely hinders the game. I have all this land, but what am I supposed to do with it now? Quite frankly, it's kind of an insult to the once great series. Number five, Connect Sports Rivals. Out. 15 all. Oh, Rare, what happened to you guys? The once great development team behind acclaimed titles like GoldenEye 007 and Conker's Bad Fur Day are now doing Connect Sports games with exciting mini games like bowling, target shooting, and tennis. Yep, it's pretty friggin' boring. Everything that you can do in this game, previous motion control games have done better including its own predecessor, which was released four years earlier. All of the personality and fun has been sucked out of this release, and what we're left with was a drab, lifeless, and barely functioning mess of a game. Come back, Rare, we miss you. Well, maybe you are right for us. Maybe not. Number four, Crimson Dragon. 
Crimson Dragon sounds like a cool game. You control your very own dragon with the Kinect and take it through various intense battles, all while teaching it some badass new skills along the way, like a real pet. So it's too bad that the execution is so utterly mediocre. For one thing, the controls were absolutely horrendous at launch, as they're clunky, unresponsive, and more than a little confusing. Couple this with the outdated graphics, cliche story, and awful microtransactions, and you can see why this game was more of a wispy breath than a fiery roar. Number 3. Action News Heroes This title is a top-down shooter reminiscent of classic arcade titles like Smash TV. You know, those ones that were designed to be impossible so you die a lot and spend more money in order to get more lives? Well, this game is exactly that, only without the thrill of going to the real arcade with your friends and, you know, you've already bought it, so why is it killing you so much? It is frustratingly difficult, but it also features a confusing and nonsensical rating system, anticlimactic boss battles, and some of the most annoying music you've ever heard. It's not terrible for 10 bucks, but it's certainly not good either, kind of like Arby's. Number 2. Super Knight Riders First off, can we just acknowledge what a terribly corny title that is? Okay, so, as for the game, it is equally terrible and corny, and yet it's another title that tries to harken back to classic arcade games without really nailing of the elements which made them fun. This motorcycle racing game is rife with constant frame rate drops, which pretty much eliminates any sense of excitement that could have been found. However, performance issues aside, the game would have still been a massive dud due to the repetitive and surprisingly boring gameplay. Maybe it's best to keep these 90s influenced games back in the 90s where they belong. Unless you're Nintendo, you guys get a pass. Number 1. Fighter Within Ah uh, yes, Fighter Within, aka one of the most miserable botch jobs in console launch history. This game should have been amazing, what with its full body Kinect experience and real time physical damage. Instead, it was an unplayable mess thanks to the Kinect's miserable motion detection and its countless glitches. Seriously, this game is just kind of an embarrassment on all fronts, from the performance issues to the atrocious writing to the fact that this was a launch title. It's really no surprise that the Kinect 2.0 failed because this was how they introduced it. Fighter Within, for friends who fight. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.